Today you will learn three things you must avoid that you hear from property mentors. Hi, my name is Max and I'm an Auckland property investor. The first common advice that is completely false is that you should only invest in certain parts of Auckland if you want to achieve high capital growth. They could say that you should only buy in central Auckland, grammar zones, North Shore, etc. You name it. But there is no data to back it up. Now you may be wondering what is the best area to invest in for high capital growth? And the answer is it doesn't matter. Most parts of Auckland achieved 70 to 100 percent growth over the last 10 years. And if you look at the latest report from the Core Logic, they have analyzed thousands of sales. And I was quite surprised to see that most parts of Auckland, whether it's White Takari, Manukau, South Auckland, North Shore, pretty much everything enjoyed up to 100% of capital growth. So if any property mentor still insists that you should buy only in this area and not this area, then simply ask them, do you have a research or some data to prove your claim? And when you pay them thousands of dollars, if they can't prove it, then this advice is complete bullshit. And I would be interested to see from your feedback, do you invest in certain parts of Auckland or do you buy whatever it makes sense? The second common advice that is not correct is to find a good real estate agent and then tell them your requirements so they can find you an awesome deal faster. Well, while it sounds good in theory, it's actually not very helpful for a property investor. And I'll tell you why. For example, if you told any real estate agent that your budget is $700,000, you want a subdividable property and you had 30 days to complete a transaction before your bank approval would expire. What you just said was a big no-no for a property investor. Remember that the seller wants the highest possible price and you as the buyer want the lowest possible price. And this is how the market works. So if it would be an auction, the seller would never disclose you his bottom price. Therefore, you should not disclose your budget to the seller or to the real estate agent. Even if the agent knows his or her bottom price, which the seller is happy to accept, they would never tell it to you because they are supposed to represent the seller and they will protect his or her rights by law. At the same time, you should not disclose your budget or your highest possible price to anyone because this is fair. Imagine that you are playing a poker game and you think that you hit your flush. In a poker game, a flush means five cards of the same suit and when you tell to a real estate agent that you want a subdividable property and you've got 30 days to complete the transaction and your budget is around $700,000 you just disclose your cards and you are unlikely to achieve your goals so make sure you keep your cards close to your chest another reason not to disclose this kind of sensitive information to an agent because some agents actually do not do their proper research or they basically want you to buy this property at a discount and it actually makes sense from my point of view as a property investor because it is a, a numbers game for them they'd rather to sell two properties for six hundred thousand dollars in one month or they would sell just one property for $700,000 in one month. And I'll explain you why. Their commission on $600,000 is $20,000. So if they would sell two properties in one month, they would make $40,000 in 30 days. But if they would have to sell 
exactly the same property because it is subdividable or it's got some other unique features and they would have to sell us for seven hundred thousand dollars then their commission would be only extra two thousand dollars so they would make only twenty two thousand dollars in 30 days which is not very favorable for a real estate agent therefore they're trying to sell as many properties as possible the only thing that i'd be happy to tell to any agent is that i'm looking for a property in auckland that it has to be a dual property and i will possibly tell them the type of property that i'm after for example if I want to buy a bare land, a house, a unit or an apartment. By all means, be friendly with a real estate agent, but do not disclose them sensitive information. What I do is I simply just go to TradeMe or realestate.co.nz and I find for these interesting properties. Then I contact the real estate agent and we discuss the deal. If it doesn't fit my requirements, then I just tell the real estate agent that I didn't like the neighbor, I didn't like the property or whatever. It doesn't, doesn't really um, matter in this case. But you want to tell them that you want similar properties in the future and that's enough for them to give you possibly another bargain. Leave your comments below and tell me, do you have a preferred real estate agent? Does this relationship work for you? Or have you bought most of your properties yourself? The third common mistake is about the property clock. Imagine that you have a clock on your computer and if you would ask two different people in any part of New Zealand to indicate what is the current time, 100% they would tell you exactly the same time. But if you would ask two different property mentors to tell you what is the current time, looking at the property clock, and in many cases, they would tell you all sorts of options and all sorts of scenarios, which tells you that this damned property clock is broken. So stop using the broken tool. Another thing that is completely false about this property clock is that somehow you can predict what is going to happen next by looking at this uh, property clock. And there was so much research done on this subject that it is impossible to time the market and it will give you a false impression of control. Just give it up and forget about this property clock. There was an interesting quote by Nick Murray who said, time in the market is a fool's game. Time in the market is your greatest natural advantage. If you look at this chart from Buffett and Thompson, it will show you that since 1954, property values grew on a regular basis. Yes, there were some dips and correction, but overall, people with properties became wealthier. The clock is a precise tool. And as we discussed before, it is impossible to predict what is going to happen next, when is going to be the next correction or the next crash. So just do not rely on this property clock. It is a fictional tool that does not exist. Another thing that I do not like about this property clock is that it gives you the wrong permission to delay your property investments. There were a lot of um, comments and researches done on investments and the biggest outcome was that you have to consistently invest if you want to make sure that you do not avoid the boom and then you spread your risks when there, there are corrections. A simple example would be if you imagine that now you have the time and energy to do investments but next year your personal situation could change and you may get married or you may have a baby and you wouldn't be able to do it you just uh, will have different priorities so make sure you do investments 
and buy this property if it meets your requirements. Another example is that your career may change and you may have to go overseas for 5 or 10 years. But if you would have bought this property, even though if it's in a different or maybe in, in the incorrect property cycle, the property value would have doubled while you are away overseas. So you would, you would win anyway. I just explained you three main things you must avoid that you hear from property mentors. And the basic solutions are invest in most parts of Auckland as long as it meets your requirements and you have done your due diligence because the data shows that most parts of Auckland will achieve high capital growth anyway. The second solution is to keep sensitive information to yourself. Just give enough fundamental information to the real estate agent and you'll be just fine. Last but not least is that you have to completely ignore the property clock. It is impossible to time the market. The most important thing is time in the market and you will become wealthier. Leave a comment below and I'd like to know, do you agree with these examples or not? And please subscribe because more good stuff coming soon.